is Gina Gray, and I'm with Colin McVoy, a creative agency out of Minneapolis, which is part of Stagwell, who's put, putting on this fantastic sport beach. And we're coming to you live from the 2023 Cannes Lions Festival of Creativity. And this year, we're focused on all things sport, fandom, the intersection of sports and fans and culture. And today, I'm sitting down with a dear friend of ours, Michelle Fro, who's a glo lo global CMO of ETS, and also Spencer Dinwiddie, NBA star with the Brooklyn Nets. Now today I want to talk to you a little bit about the intersection of sports and education, right? That's kind of what we're here today to do. So Michelle, can you talk to us a little bit about what you do for ETS and why you're excited to be here today? Yeah, so, well, super excited to be here. I feel like I need to be on a, <laughs> a box. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think it, it's, it strikes me that we know a lot of data about our favorite athletes and uh, uh, and we know stats and I know you all use data to progress yourselves and and be better um, but we don't have that same amount of data on education and our kids in the education system um, and so you know at ETS we're really all our mission really is to um, help advance uh, the quality and equity in education um, through scientific research and through um, assessments. And part of what we do is actually measure the science of learning. And um, that's very important um, and uh, to, to us, but I also think it's incredibly um, important in uh, how the intersection of sports comes in because the kind of skills that, that our young people need and we need really to continue to advance are some of those durable skills that sports teach us, collaboration, you know, teamwork, um, agility, things like that. And Spencer, can you talk to us a little bit about why you're here and you're excited about um, talking today and really about your obviously the investment that you're making in education through some of your initiatives? Um, yeah, I mean, I think to piggyback off you, I think um, physical capacity and the, the traits and skills that we learn in sport um, definitely uh, apply and, and go across the board to, uh, you know, mental capacity as well. Um, like you said, durability, I think resiliency, some of those uh, collaborative efforts, working on a team, etc. cetera. Um, but then for me personally, obviously beyond just kind of championing basketball and, and understanding the, uh, the, the, the wonderful but unique opportunity that I have to play in the NBA and that most won't uh, necessarily accomplish that. But then there's a, obviously a whole other aspect of life that many will accomplish and many can accomplish. It just comes down to tools, resources, and obviously that's something uh, like graduating from, um, from college. And so one of my initiatives and, and the main initiative of my foundation actually is uh, you know, a four-year gap coverage um, um, scholarship program. So basically kids apply, they apply for their financial aid, et cetera. Uh, if they meet the requirements uh, year over year, then we cover everything um, else that's outstanding after they obviously have whatever grants, et cetera, that they have. And um, they get to graduate college uh, debt free. So um, that was uh, an extension of basically a program that my grandmother kind of tried to do in our, in our church. So I would say she kind of was uh, local, I guess, and I'm kind of taking it a step further, maybe regional-ish. Um, and hopefully, obviously, we continue to progress uh, nationally, globally, et cetera. Well, I feel like you both kind of touched on this already, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to say a little bit more. What inspires you most about your mission and the work that you're both doing today? <laughs> um, you know what? I think it's it's having an impact um, and and seeing that impact, you know, not not only on uh, for people now and, and, and this next generation, but also I think for lifelong learners. Um, I think that, you know, as, as, well, actually, as life is going to continue to get longer, um, which kind of seems fun and then kind of scary too a little yeah. bit, right? Because, you know, it's not just gonna be three chapters of your life anymore. You're not just gonna have education, work, retirement. You might have multiple careers. You might have multiple um, opportunities to upskill, reskill, and and I think having that curiosity for lifelong learning and being able to help people along that journey um, really helps humanity progress. Yeah, I mean, I would say for me, it's kind of a understanding family and then also my own life journey, right? Like I said uh, briefly before, I understand how difficult it is to make it to the NBA. And I found myself when I was talking a lot of times uh, in my early early career, even when I was a D1 college basketball player, um, if I was too busy kind of selling that, 
I was almost kind of selling some people down the river, right? Because if you think the NBA is your only option, there's only 500 of us, you know, and, and it's just a, it, it's possible, but you know, there, there's possible, there's probable, you know, and, and there's a lot to be obtained in life um, that's outside of that. I think legacy was the second piece. Like I said, this is an extension of what my grandmother kind of saw in her mission. And, you know, she's one of the top two people that I, that I hold or held dear um, to my heart, her and my, and my son. Um, yeah, I mean, and then obviously inspiring the next generation. Um, I hadn't really thought about our extending lifespan, so now, you know, that up upskilling and reskilling is a, is a, is a big uh, task to undertake, but I think it's going to be fun for a lot of people. But for me, it was just, like I said, not feeling like I was selling the youth down the river, even though I know that I'm very fortunate. It's hard to preach only possible, right? Like, I want you to accomplish your dreams. I want you to go for it. But there's always that level of realism with, with life. I love that. And... I think, you know, here we are at the Festival of Creativity. Obviously, a lot as marketers, we always talk about data, right? Data, data, data. And I think I would love to hear your thoughts on how you've experienced data as a game changer. Mm. Oh, man. I, I start that one? <laughs> yeah, you sure. can do that. Um, personally, I know this is a little bit off of, uh, you know, maybe the, the set topic that we have, but data, especially in my profession, is, is a game changer. When I first got an MBA in 2014, um, we still played two centers on the court. It was a slower game. Um, Steph Curry to Warriors, just this whole transition in the last 10 years about threes and, and the combined value of a shot. What's the most valuable shot? A layup versus a mid-range shot versus a three, et cetera, and the different ranges and spots on the court that things are most valuable. And now every team has a 20, 30-person analytics department. Um, and, you're, and you're seeing that. I mean, obviously, we get paid a lot of money, so there's a, there's a very uh, – big investment in, in knowing things down to the millimeter and microsecond but overall in, in in across the board in life like people are starting to make that investment and with the advent of, of or not advent but with AI kind of becoming more mainstream all those uh, kind of back office transactions and, and data points and and recheck points are uh, becoming more automated so that, the, that means that the uh, the resources are going to be able to be extended to different environments, even ones like education, which may, which may not have the investment at the moment um, because it's not necessarily as uh, profitable as, as other uh, areas of life or immediately profitable, profitable I'll say. Um, they're going to start to uh, get a lot of data information driven uh, analytics as well. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't that be amazing if our young kids today actually had a data and analytics team to help them, you know, progress <laughs> their skills? Wouldn't oh, that yeah. be amazing? So that that's that's like the dream. And frankly, we could we can do that even with AI and use data for good. Um, you know, multimodal AI, for example, is a way that. Um, people can get multiple inputs, like how they speak, um, how they connect, uh, what their empathy, you know, is in, in their responses, how they write. And so it goes beyond cognitive, like we were saying, and um, to be able to have all of that and have your own personal analytics team, I think would be amazing. I love that idea. <laughs> okay, so what can we do today to bring attention to how vastly underfunded education is? Well, I think Spencer hit on it. I mean, for sure, we um, we need to invest, and we need to invest um, not only in in the next generation, um, in the here and now, but also in in that future. And I do think too, um, we need to also change how we're measuring um, uh, learning and and success. And so one of the things we've done recently at e at ETS. Um, is partner with the Carnegie Foundation and um, try and change the currency of education uh, to be actually skill-based versus time-based. Because a lot of the, um, uh, well, to get a college degree, right, there's a, car there's a unit of time that is if you spend so much time in seat, uh, you get your degree. And that's, that's not the only dimension that we really need to assess. So I think, again, the skill based um, to uh, what it really means to be uniquely human as well as, um, you know, a very a cognitive ability uh, is going to be important for the future. Yeah, and then to piggyback off that, I mean, you touched on two major things, um, investment and obviously uh, skill-based versus time-based. I agree with those wholeheartedly. Um, and then obviously because I'm kind of at the intersection of entertainment industry as well, uh, excuse my language, we got to make it sexy, you know, yeah. and I think we got to yeah, be 
That's yeah. what I say every day about my job. Hey, I gotta go. make it sexy. You gotta, you gotta make it sexy. <laughs> I mean, I think, um, you know, for kids, part of the reason they wanna be us is because when you see us on TV, it looks phenomenal. It looks like a departure from reality. People love to be unique, to, to uh, be scarce in a way, like human beings love scarcity, right? So what you wanna start doing is making these uh, skill-based uh, jobs, tasks, et cetera, um, um, really something that we champion. And I think uh, more kids will, will buy in. Okay, last question. If we could have everybody listening do one thing to vastly change the trajectory of education in young people, what would it be? Invest and uh, get involved, I think. Yeah, I would say uh, the get involved piece. I, I find it, uh, I think my, my vocabulary came from my mom reading to me all the time and speaking to me like an adult, and that really cost, cost no money. You know what I mean? And obviously my mom, she was a very smart woman, has a PhD and everything, so it probably is that type of influence that did it. But just remembering, like, understanding kind of nuances of adult conversation, et cetera, sarcasm, all those things at an early age allowed me to progress uh, fairly quickly uh, in my own peer group and environment. So, you know, and that's just from her reading, reading to me and, and, and having intelligent conversations. Well, we're going to wrap it up today, but thank you so much, Spencer. Thank you, Michelle, for the awesome conversation. And be sure to follow us, Stagwell Sport Beach 2023, for content throughout the week. And thank you.